Okay, so this here is a lesson on the scalar product or the dot product. And the scalar product is defined by two vectors as a product of two vectors. We'll call them A vector and B vector. And the scalar product is A dot B. And if this is the angle between them when they're tail to tail, this is equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B cosine of theta. And if we look in what our formula booklet says, there's also a formula in our formula booklet that says that exact thing. It says that oh, this right here is the angle between the two vectors. Now it also says something else down low here. I can also do the dot product by doing a computation. So imagine if I had vector a1, a2, a3, dot, b1, b2, and b3. The way I do this is I take this and I multiply those two, add it to those multiplied, add it to those multiplied. And when I do that, I get a1b1 plus a2b2 plus a3b3. And memorizing this, I don't do. I just look at the pattern here. Multiply and add, multiply and add, multiply and add. And this, when I do it, is a scalar. And that's a key fact. It is a scalar. The dot product gives a scalar value. And now what I can then say is that this calculation here is also equal to that formula there for vectors and the dot product or scalar product. So it works in two dimensions and three dimensions. Looking at these two, if I want to find u dot v, well, I like to write them out in columns so that I can easily read them better. Here are my two vectors. If I dot them, I go 1 times root 3 is root 3 plus root 3 times 1 is root 3, which gives me 2 root 3, a scalar. And that's as simple as a dot product is. There are some implications to this scenario, because if a dot b is equal to a b magnitudes cosine theta, if these two vectors, a and b, are perpendicular, the cosine of 90 degrees we know cosine of 90 is equal to 0. And so therefore, if a and b are 0, or a dot b is 0, then I know that a is perpendicular to b. And that's a key statement. This is probably the most important statement of the whole unit. What we also know, that if a dot b equals the magnitude of a, times the magnitude of b, if this is true, well, that happens when I get the cos cosine of 0 degrees, it equals 1. And so that means that these vectors are parallel. I also know that if a, if I have a dot b, property-wise, it's the same thing as saying b dot a. It doesn't change anything. So there's three things I know about a dot b's altogether couple more implications. If it's a dot a, well, I know they're parallel, so the cosine of 0 is 1, and it ends up being a, oop, and a, 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 which is the same as the magnitude of a squared. And magnitude usually have a square root, and that gets rid of the square root, typically. As for properties, if I multiply a vector times a scalar, is the same as taking the scalar and multiplying it by the dot product. So I could dot product first and then multiply by scalar. Order doesn't matter. This thing here, dot product works like the distribution property. So it's a dot b plus a dot c. It is distributive. And finally, this one here is a bit of a trick. Because if you think about it, if I go a dot b, that produces a scalar quantity. And so a scalar dot a vector makes no sense. 
this is impossible. Is it dot products or vectors dot vectors? So that's a bit of a trick. Be careful of this scenario. It happens sometimes. All right, let's try an example here to demonstrate this. Given the, these points, find the size of vector BAC. So if I want BAC, I want BAC. I want A to be the tail of both vectors. So I want to find vector BA. So that means head minus. Well, how about I want to find the right vector I just said. I want A to be the tail, so AB. And I'm also going to want vector AC. So I go head minus tail, so 1 minus 2 is 1. Negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2. Well, let's go column wise. Uh, I go 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2. And then find a negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. Look at AC. 1 minus 2 is minus 1. Negative 1. Let's add 3 gives me 2. Negative 2 minus 1 is a negative 3. So if I have these vectors, I am going to now go a b dot a c. I want to get which is going to be a b a c cosine of theta. I am looking for this angle theta here. So finding the magnitude of a b is square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 4 squared. I've eliminated the negatives because I know when I square them, it goes away. So it's 16, 17, and 4 is square root of 21. Whereas this one here, the magnitude of AC is 1 squared plus 2 squared plus negative 3 squared, which gives me the square root of 14. And so I know this is square root 21 times square root of 14 is cosine of theta. A dot B, negative 1, negative 2, negative 4, dot, negative 1, 2, negative 3. So that gets 1, 1, plus a negative 2, plus a 12, because I multiply them is root 21, root 14, cosine theta. And finally, when I add these together, I get 13 minus 2 is 11, divided by 21 and 14 is cosine. Using your calculator, I can punch it in. Make sure you are in degree mode. And that will help a lot. And type it in, you get to, and you end up with 50.1 degrees. Theta equals 50.1 degrees. So using the formulas, we can just crunch through, find the vectors, use the formulas, and you can find the angle between them. I'll do another example here. We're looking, we're given these vectors here. Find the scalar product T such that PTQ is perpendicular to this scenario here. If I want to do that, I'm looking to find this brand new vector. I have to add them together when this is multiplied by T. So this new vector, which I'll call A, A will be 4 plus 2T, negative 1 plus T, and 2 plus t. This is my new vector. Dot it with 3, 5, 1. And when I do that, to be perpendicular, this is the key theorem, it must be 0. And so now I comp compute this. I get 3 times the 4 plus 2t, plus the 5 times negative 1 plus t, plus 1 times 2 plus t is equal to 0. So 12 plus 6t minus 5 plus 5t 
plus 2 plus t equals 0, I have 12t. 7 plus 2 is 9. And so t is equal to negative 9 over 12, which is negative 3 over 4 is my t value. And so one more to go. But if I recap this one for a second, the key is to get perpendicular, add the vectors with the parameter, crunch through the computations. Okay, now, last problem for today. Given that A and B are perpendicular, and that this is true with A and B, evaluate this. Well, this thing here works like regular distribution. So it's 2A dot A plus 8A dot B minus A dot B minus 4B dot B. Okay, so now I know they are perpendicular, which means that, that product is zero and that product is zero. That all cancels away. I know this is the same as saying 2a squared minus 4b squared because that's the properties. So it's 2 times 5 squared minus 4 times 3 squared. So that's 25 times 2 minus 4 times 9. 50 minus 36 is 14. And so this product here is 14 because we've used our properties and what was given to find the value.